Okay, so hi, my name is Mark Payne uh, at SFL Group here. I'm in prep room uh, one. Uh, I'm in pre-production for Disney's uh, Fantasia Live where we do, people watch the film, it's an arena show, people watch the film and they listen to the Royal Philharmonic Concert Orchestra who play the score live while people are watching the original uh, Disney uh, Fantasia footage. Uh, uh, I'm doing a few things here with um, uh, Waves, which I thought you might be interested in seeing. Uh, I'll probably try and do some filming uh, during some of the shows. We've got three shows in Glasgow, uh, Manchester and Birmingham uh, between Christmas and New Year. So um, I'm just doing a few um, new Waves things here uh, from a recording point of view and also using Waves plugins. Uh, and so I just thought I'd show you what's going on. Um, you'll see here um, if um, I think say hi to Pat because he's with me here doing some filming. Uh, I'm using a Midas Pro 2 to uh, mix this show on. Um, there's a couple of things going on. I'm running a Waves Multi-Rack um, uh, which is an environment where I can put particular reverbs that I want to use and also some uh, compressors on the main output. Um, it's an orchestral thing, so this isn't going to be a show full of plugins, but I just wanted to show you here that uh, I'm basically using this multi rack environment within the context of the Midas Pro 2. And um, over here, you'll see also I'm using the Waves um, interface uh, to also enable me to capture uh, 48 channels of the gig um, uh, uh, live which gives me the ability to do virtual sound check. And uh, a little bit further down here, you can see the Waves Impact Server uh, that I'm using to uh, run the DSP for the plugins. Uh, this DSP is being run here because this is a very performant and reliable machine for actually uh, doing the, the CPU horsepower of running the plugins. Um, the computer that you see up on my uh, desk, the Sony PC, it could be anything because it's only running the, um, the actual user interface to control the plugins. The actual hardware DSP is happening on Wave's own specific impact server. And uh, you also can see here, it's a little bit difficult to see it because I've racked it up. This is a, a Wave's uh, DigiGrid uh, MGB. The MGB is basically an interface that takes MADI and turns it into a Cat5 environment that's allowing me to network all of these machines together. It might be a bit clearer if I show you that um, up on the board here. I've just um, uh, drawn the basic configuration. So my orchestra is um, a 60 piece, but I'm able to double up quite a few microphones. So although there's 60 microphones out there, in the end it really comes to me as around 48 channels. So here you can see there's a Midas DL251, which is the stage box. You need to imagine that this is going to be um, side of stage. So we take the 48 Midas microphone preamplifiers, we connect it through 100 meters of multi-core, the actual multi-core is coiled up in a box underneath the mixing desk right now in, in the prep room. Uh, and then we hit the Pro 2. So that's brought all of these signals as two lots of 24 channel on AES-50 uh, Cat5. That comes into the Midas Pro 2. And then the Midas Pro 2 effectively sends uh, an I.O. bus on three more AES-50s. And that's going to a DN9650, which is a conversion box and this box is allowing me to convert from the Midas world of AES-50 into the kind of industry standard MADI world, which is a 60-channel interface. And let me show you where the, um, the DN9650 is here. Now here you can see that um, we've got all three incoming AES-50s flashing away in green uh, for me. So this is the box that is seamlessly converting from AES-50, that's the world of Midas, running at 96K, to the world of MADI, uh, which is running at 48K, and that's what hits the DigiGrid um, MGB. The, um, uh, the MGB is the BNC version. It takes MADI BNC in, and it produces this sound grid interface out. The sound grid then hits my switch, and the switch then distributes the sound grid network to the Waves impact server, my MacBook Pro, which is running Logic to do the record, and also allows me to interface um, my user interface to control the plugins. So looking back at the, uh, the board here, 
You can see the waves digigrid MGB that I showed you in the rack. That takes the MADI stream that's been provided by the DN9650. We turn into the sound grid interface. At the moment, I'm just running this through a, a cheap Hewlett Packard gigabit network switch. That allows me to send the 48 channels through to the recording device, which is my MacBook Pro, and also allows me to have 16 more channels. I'm limited with the channel count here because of I'm only using one MADI stream. It's actually worthwhile commenting that the MGB is capable of taking two MADI streams. It has a MADI A and a MADI B input. It's actually a 128 channel capable um, uh, I.O. box. So I'm, however, I'm only using one MADI stream, which means that I'm using 48 channels to record. That's the same 48 channels that are coming into the board. They just bus straight through to the recording device. And I'm also using 16 channels to provide I.O. into the impact server where I can put my plugins. As I said before, this is not a plug plug-in heavy show, but I just wanted to show you how this is being set up. Uh, therefore, the Sony PC, which I showed you, does not get involved in the audio stream. It's not an audio device. It's purely controlling the plugins that are on the impact server. The IO, the audio stream is actually in and out of the impact server. Of course, all of this is a bi-directional process, so we can record and play back, and obviously the plugins are working as inserts. So I just thought I'd show you that environment. Here you can see I'm just starting to build this for a multi-rack. I'm using the uh, Convolution um, reverb, the IR uh, live reverb, which I really like the sound of. It's a great reverb for a live engineer to use. Uh, you just basically got some really quick settings. And uh, for the orchestra, I don't really know what environment I'm going to be until I'm, I'm there. I don't know what the reverb time of the building is going to be. So I've got a, a kind of a short reverb and a longer reverb if I need to um, uh, add a little bit more ambience uh, to the orchestra. I've also got here um, uh, the classic C6 compressor that Waves make, which I'll run on final output. And this is just to give me a little bit of multiband compression. So that's what's going on um, over in that world. In fact, you can see this running because this is, uh, happens to be channel one, which for me is the orchestra leader, the first violin. And uh, you can already see that that's coming in uh, to channel one here of uh, the console. Let's just go home. Uh, you can see channel one here and also if you look over you can see that also I'm picking that up here on my um, um, uh, logic uh, recorder so if I just hit record here we'll we'll do some recording of of channel one as we go and you can also see that over here uh, because I'm running this through the uh, the left right bus is going through uh, this. In fact, why don't we just put a little bit of uh, multi-band compression on, drag the threshold down a little bit, start to take control. You can see here that we're, we're doing some um, uh, multi-band compression. You might just be able to hear my own little uh, monitoring system. I mean, that's quite a severe point for the threshold. Let's uh, just take this up a little bit. I'm not going to squash that much. It's just a point to show you uh, what's going on there. So uh, while we've been doing this, I've been recording. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop uh, the record process, uh, which we'll do there. Now, um, I'll put this microphone back down again. And so effectively what's happened is we've captured that. I now need to make sure that I ask the Midas Pro 2, instead of listening to the DL251 stage box, I need to redirect the inputs to the tape returns which are coming back. So quite simply I do that on the console by going into the um, preferences and um, in this area here uh, for configuration I'm going to basically hit the tape return. So in one hit I have redirected the console to instead of be listening to the stage box it's now going to listen to the, uh, the logic record system. So I'm going to take that out of record and quite simply go back to a point, hit play. You can also see that over here, uh, because I'm running this through the, uh, the left right bus is going through uh, this. In fact, why don't we just put a little bit of uh, multi-band compression on, drag the threshold down a little bit. Okay, so you can see here that I've uh, basically created 
a virtual sound check environment. Now it's the wave system that's enabling me to do this. Let's just recap what's going on. I'm using the fantastic 128 uh, input channel um, uh, um, uh, Waves DigiGrid MGB. This is a fanta fantastic interface that takes MADI and turns it into the DigiGrid network. Once I'm in the DigiGrid network, I can do two things with this. I can direct I.O. through a Waves Impact server, which allows me to run a whole host of Waves plugins with fantastic latency, really low latency, and great guaranteed performance. I'm also recording to a MacBook Pro using um, uh, the uh, Waves driver, which allows me to interface the Cat5 connection and basically get AS, ASIO IO going on. You can use Logic, you can use Nuendo, you can use Pro Tools uh, to record from this driver. So that's it. I hope to come back to you a little bit uh, later on. Maybe the, it'll look more like a gig because I won't be in one of our prep rooms doing pre-production, but I hopefully, hopefully this has been useful to you. My name's Mark Payne. You can email me, mark at sflgroup.co.uk. Look us up on the website, uh, sflgroup.co.uk. Um, uh, we're Midas dealers and Waves dealers. It would be great to speak to you if you've got any inquiries. Thank you.